Hey everyone, this is Dr. Ezra with Integrative Kidney Institute, and today I'm going to talk to you about the role of magnesium in kidney health. So let's do this. So when you think about magnesium and kidney health, there are a few points that I would like to focus on today. One is improving blood pressure control, two is improving insulin sensitivity and glucose control, and then bone health, vascular health, and preventing kidney stones, and the role of magnesium and treating hyperphosphatemia or elevated blood phosphate level. So before we talk about this, let's think about what is the food that is highest source of magnesium. And these are the leafy greens, the nuts, the pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds are actually the highest, has the highest level of magnesium at 156 milligram per serving. And then finally you have the whole grains. Now, let's talk about high blood pressure and how magnesium affects or improve blood pressure control. So studies after studies found that magnesium supplementation with an average dose of 500 milligram a day lowered blood pressure by at least five over three MHG. So for systolic, it will, the systolic blood pressure was lowered by five and the diastolic was lowered by three. So that's a pretty good, uh, decent number for a supplement. And why does magnesium improve blood pressure control? And actually it improved vascular health because it has good effect on the endothelium, on the lining of the blood vessels. It increased platelet, it decreased platelet aggregation. And also it affects the smooth muscles by in, inducing more relaxation because it antagonizes calcium and, uh, and block the calcium channels and also increase prostaglandin I2 excretion and increased nitric oxide too. So on the other aspect, magnesium also improved insulin sensitivity. Magnesium is actually crucial in the insulin signaling on the level of the insulin receptor and, and on the cell membrane uh, because it improved uh, insulin signaling and incorporate glucose transporters into the cell membrane. So that improved glucose utilization. In fact, a review of 18 studies in people with diabetes showed that magnesium supplementation reduced fasting glucose level by statistically significant numbers. And when you look at it here in this figure, you can see that magnesium is crucial for the insulin receptor signaling and for the incorporation of the GLUT4 uh, transporters into the cell membrane, which improve glucose utilization and increase the, the glucose that are entering the cells and, and decrease insulin, the glucose that is in the blood vessels. So the third thing which we can we allude to earlier is magnesium improved vascular health. Magnesium improved vascular flow because it, it has good effect on the endothelium and on the vascular smooth muscles. So it improved endothelial function. And also actually it was found to inhibit the calcification of the blood vessels in patients who have high phosphate level because of their kidney disease. So magnesium is good to prevent vascular calcification for kidney patients. And then magnesium is actually essential for vitamin D. So vitamin D binding protein, which is essential for circulating vitamin D or transporting vitamin D through the circulation, depend on the presence of adequate magnesium levels. And magnesium is actually a cofactor of an enzyme that activates vitamin D. And if you are giving your patient a large dose of vitamin D, that by itself can lead to magnesium depletion. So when you're giving your patient who is deficient in vitamin D and you're placing vitamin D uh, nutritionally or uh, with a supplementation, you may induce low magnesium levels. So it's important that you supplement that those patients with magnesium, at least be aware that magnesium may end up being low and check for it. And here we get to the point where magnesium is crucial for bone health. In fact, 60% of total magnesium, uh, total body magnesium is stored in the bone. So magnesium is a crucial component of that hydroxyapatite, which is the basic structure of the bone. And studies showed that magnesium or low magnesium was associated with low bone mineral density. So low magnesium can lead to osteoporosis. And magnesium also 
impact the release of PTH or the parathyroid hormone. So low magnesium can be associated with high PTH. This is a more complicated uh, story, but that also can affect bone health. And magnesium, we think about it uh, and from the aspect of kidney stones, magnesium inhibit calcium oxalate crystallization in the, uh, in the urine and the formation of kidney stones. But also magnesium in the diet prevent dietary oxalate absorption in the gut. So, so there's two ways that magnesium can help patients prevent kidney stones by number one, decreasing oxalate uh, absorption in the gut, and number two, by decreasing the crystallization of calcium and oxalate in the urine. And then magnesium can also work as a phosphorus binder, phosphate binder. Magnesium carbonate in this study was found to be effective binder for phosphorus in dialysis patients. So soon we're going to find this as a medication available for kidney patients. And finally, I want to share this study with you, which showed that low magnesium is associated with increased risk for new onset diabetes after kidney transplant. So magnesium is essential for kidney and vascular health. So I hope you like this video. If you liked it, make sure you subscribe to our channel, click the button, like it, put a comment, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, at nkidney, on Instagram, at integrative kidney, and we're always available at www.nkidney.com.